Hi, welcome. Welcome to our channel. My name is Jolie and um, today I'm going to be reading from Courage to Change and um, I was drawn to do that because I needed it and um, I do have all the lessons up from January 1st through December 31st. Uh, the books One Day at a Time in Al-Anon, uh, Hope for Today, and Courage to Change. Today I'm just going to do an added courage to change. And um, today is January 15th. So it'll be on page 15 in this book here. And um, let's see what comes up for today. So thank you guys for coming and joining me. And I appreciate it. Thank you very much. So here we go. Let's see. Recently, I learned about a crisis in life, in the life of an alcoholic I love. Today, while trying to work, I found myself slumping in my chair, depressed and distracted. Soon, all the thoughts of work had fled, and I was busy projecting a horrible outcome to my loved one's crisis and dreading the ways in which the consequences might affect me. The slogan, one day at a time, reminds me that in spite of my fears, I don't know what tomorrow will bring. My cat, I don't. Why am I leaping into the future? It's a question. Perhaps I've given my feelings no room to exist. Perhaps I've given my feelings no room to exist. I feel that. Part of me gambles that by worrying in advance, bad news will be easier to face if it comes. But worrying will not protect me from the future. It will just keep me from living here and now. I had to learn that. Because I always thought, okay, I'll just feel this now so when it hits me, it won't be so bad. And someone had told me, you're suffering. You like suffer twice, three times. You're constantly suffering. And then like the outcome will happen the way it does. So let it go. And um, I didn't know how to do that, but I learned. I. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a process, it's, you know. So anyway, the today's reminder, let me move on. She cleans herself, <laughs> little cat. All right, so I needn't explore how I'll feel about something that might occur in the future. That might occur in the future. I don't actually know how I'll feel. And it may, never happen. So when I feel myself leaving the present, I remind myself that the future is not today's problem. That feels good because then I don't have to rob myself of what's actually what I can do. Like notice that I'm okay can breathe. I can, yeah, that's great. So there's a quote from A.J. Cronin. Don't know who that is. And it says, worry never robs tomorrow of its sorrow. It only saps today of its strength. I always thought that if I didn't worry, then it, then it was like I didn't care. I always thought worry meant that I that I was invested and I was gonna work towards it, worry, work in, so that I can. Oh, like it. Um, what does it? The thing is, um, uh, exaggerating my troubles until they overwhelm me. So I pray not to do that. That's one of the one of the things that I remember from me. Today, I pray to 
not exaggerate my troubles until they overwhelm me because I have a trouble and there it is. I can see what it is, but if I keep exaggerating it, then it's going to get bigger and swollen. And then it's going to be kind of like the same trouble, only bigger and more like consuming. So if I keep the trouble in its size, then I can chip away at it and just work at it as it is, not in a more grandiose, troublesome, more troublesome way. So I've been working with that and just doing what I can do. So um, that's, so I have like, let me see, what else can I say? Peace requires me to surrender my illusions of control. So if I want peace, I have to do that. And um, Course in Miracles today, uh, you are my goal, Father God, only you. And um, also let me forget my brothers and sisters past today, including mine, so that I can forgive and be forgiven. So yeah, little by little, little things, taking walks. What did I do today? I went and had coffee with my daughter. I was tired. I didn't have to work today, but I I was like, I said, I'm going to do it. You know, like, do you ever feel like you're dragging and you don't want to do something? It's like, oh, like, I don't feel like it. But I'm like, I know I'll feel better because she wants me to come. So I'll show up for her. And it was great. It was great. And I got some things done later. But I got to sit and listen and be present with her wasn't there fixing anything. You know, there, it's like, there's a tendency for me to do that. Like, oh, I see a problem. I want to fix it. Like, you know, hearing about like the other members of the family and what's going on with them and me wanting to just go like, wow, I'm powerless over other people and what they're, you know, you know, like other people that are involved with my other kids, you know, like the their relationships. I can't go in and just say, everyone get out of the way, give me back my kids. <laughs> you know, like they're grown adults. And, um, and even with my younger ones, you know, I'm just there present for them today. It was really, I got to talk to all of them. Yeah, I talked to every one of my kids today. I spent time with my daughter here. She wasn't feeling well spent time with her and shared with her. We had just like did what I could do. You know, I didn't get a lot done. Like I still haven't painted today, but gonna, maybe. If it happens, it happens, but I'm gonna be okay with it. Like just kind of going with the flow and not being too hard on myself if I don't get certain things done because I know like that's on deck and I'm gonna do it, you know, like, so I just, I keep moving on, doing what I can. And I can't, you know, soon my thoughts. So like, if I, like this particular share today about the worrying of the alcoholic, what I found out when I went to meetings, cause I was like, I'm totally consumed by thinking about what's going on with the alcoholic in my life. And, um, it was like a consuming worry. So it was a trouble that I have worried about. So it got bigger and bigger and bigger and there is still nothing I can do about it. So she told the, 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 the person that I talked to, I was like, what do I do? And she's like, you gotta pray for them. So it kind of like kept it going down and down. And I, I didn't believe that that would help because I thought, well, that's like, thinking more about them, like praying for them, you know? So she said, no, you just pray for God's will for them. And then you give it to God. And she's like, then you 
when you pray for them, you're just doing it at that moment. You're, you're, you're bringing them there in the moment, like praying for the sick and suffering and giving that to God because it's not for you to fix, but you're still keeping them in your heart. So I was like, okay, how long do I have to do that? And she's like, every night until you don't think about it, till it's gone, till that worry is gone. So I still pray for the alcoholic in my life. And they're not like in my life, like we don't see each other every day. We don't see each other at all, but we still have connections and um, I still hold him in my heart. And, um, but I pray for God's will. That's it, that's all I can do. Like I can't make him not drink. I can't make him do anything. It's his life. You know, I can't make him change. Like, why would I want to do that? Like, I did want to do that because I thought that would fix my problems. But now I'm working on my life. I'm actually doing my life. Like, I have work. I'm working now. I'm able to communicate. I have joy in my life. You know, I'm not worried about things I can't control. And wondering why you know, everything seems to suck. Well, nothing seems to suck anymore. Even the stuff that's sucky, it seems to be okay. So anyway, that's just my story for today. And um, I appreciate you guys being here. Thanks for the, um, the comments. And um, it helps me. And I um, I know you're helping other people too with your comments because when we share our experience, it gives others strength and hope. It also gives us strength too when we are able to honestly just share from the heart. My experience is I'm still a work in progress, always learning and it's okay not to be okay. It's okay not to be okay. We just find that quiet place for ourselves. We find things that we can do, people we can call, talk to, keep busy, knit. I don't know how to knit. I don't know how to knit. I always wanted to do that. I crocheted when I was younger, but and I even have a crochet needle and I have a really cool bag with the yarn, but I'm like, I don't know, too many things. So I'm trying to keep my life simple as possible. Just, yeah, yeah. So anyway, I appreciate you guys. Yeah, I have a new painting in the back. Let's see if you can see it better. The lighting, maybe I could turn this light up a little bit, open this up. It's, a little better. it's like a happy place. I don't think it seems like that got made it darker. Let's see this. Can you see it better? Maybe. It's like a happy place. I painted it several years ago, I think in 2008. So it's quite old. But I just was like, I was in a really bad state of mind at that point. And I hadn't painted for a long time. And I was like, what makes me happy? I didn't even know what made me happy anymore. And so I just started visualizing this place. Where do I wanna be? How do I wanna be? What makes me happy? I'm like, I like this color. So I'm like, oh, okay. So then I started imagining this home and that's what came out. There's like mountains and there's trees. It's quite busy. And I was looking at it last night when I was going to bed, I was like, it just seemed like there is like the tree in the foreground. There's not light hitting it. So, you know, artwork, when you do artwork and you, if you paint or you, or even journaling, um, it really talks, it really 
it's it's what your inner being is telling you and um but uh yeah that was like i was like what's my happy place where is it i couldn't figure out but i that's what came out so that's that painting has this um dearness to me just that memory of creating that because it was like um, on the precipice of when I was painting a while ago before that and then I was just having such a hard time in this section of my life and um, that's what came out so anyway that's my cat too and I have another one back there that I'll hang up eventually I was that was another one when I was struggling emotionally another section of my life but you know it came out to be kind of silly like what makes me happy is like oh I remember being upside down when I was a little girl like you know hanging upside down on the monkey bars yeah and I was like okay so being upside down yeah and then I'm like the sun and the moon like I love that color of the twilight so yeah you'll see that eventually when that almost looks like an egg but it's the sun <laughs> yeah anyway all right, that's enough of that. If you're here still, hello, we'll say the serenity prayer. Sorry, I'm just going off on a tangent. I'm just, you know, I needed this today. So let's say the serenity prayer together. God, grant us the serenity to accept the things that we can't change, right? To have the courage to change the things we can and the wisdom to know the difference. Keep coming back. It works if you work it because you're worth it. Love you guys. I'll see you soon.